Boss battles are a sacred tradition in most video games and can be an incredibly rewarding experience. Hours of exploration, gathering resources, levelling up abilities and fighting smaller enemies can all lead to an exhilarating battle against a unique and challenging foe that will test all of your skills and knowledge of the game. Some, depending on how difficult they are, can also test our patience, or in most cases the durability of our keyboards or controllers. But as there are some games where we relish the chance to fight against another colossal opponent, there are others that will leave us quivering in our boots just at the thought and taking them on in a fight to the death. Whether they've been chasing us down throughout the entire game or trap us in a room with no means of escape, these bosses find a way to get under our skin and fill us with dread. That is, until we discover that their bark is a lot worse than their bite. Unfortunately, despite how intimidating some of these bosses are, they are terribly anticlimactic and can be dealt with without breaking much of a sweat. I'm the very unintimidating Kirsten from What Culture, and these are 10 terrifying video game bosses who are hilariously easy to beat. Number 10, El Gigante, Resident Evil 5. It was hard to miss El Gigante when they first appeared in Resident Evil 4. Standing at over 20 feet tall, these hulking brutes proved a worthy challenge to gamers in one of the greatest games in the series. The key to beating them was all the same. Shooting them with enough bullets leads to the parasites inside them being exposed, giving you a prompt to slash at them. The fear of fighting this boss came from the pressure of avoiding his attacks while making every shot count. So when he returned in Resident Evil 5, gamers assumed they would be given a similar challenge. Alas, this was not the case. Instead of demonstrating any skill in avoiding his attacks, you are placed on a mounted machine gun and just have to hold the trigger and shoot his weak spots. A once intimidating enemy was sadly reduced to an underwhelming bullet sponge. Number 9. Human Reaper – Mass Effect 2 the Reapers are a race of highly advanced starship-sized machines and the main enemies of the original Mass Effect games. Their goal is to harvest all organic life in the galaxy in order to create more Reapers. In Mass Effect 2, a race of aliens called the Collectors aid the Reapers in abducting humans from multiple colonies. Their goal is to break them down into the raw genetic material needed to create the Human Reaper, which they hope will be able to assimilate humans' ability to reproduce. The terrifying prospect of more Reapers to fight is enough motivation for Commander Shepard and company to assault the Collector's base and destroy the Human Reaper. When you finally find the Human Reaper, you are greeted by a giant human torso strapped to the wall. But as daunting as the inevitable fight may seem, it's actually rather disappointing. The gameplay quickly recedes into an arcade shooter as you hide behind cover, shoot at smaller enemies and the Human Reaper's exposed weak spots while also avoiding its huge blaster attacks. For a game series held for its creative worlds, characters and story, it feels like Bioware suddenly ran out of ideas for this boss. Number 8. Queen Goma – Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is remembered as one of the greatest games of all time, and was a major inspiration for future games. The game also has some of the most famous bosses in any Legend of Zelda game, such as Bongo Bongo, Shadow Link and the Nefarious Ganon. However, the first boss in this legendary game is so easy to beat that you'd be forgiven for forgetting that she was even in the game altogether. You encounter her in the basement of the Deku Tree dungeon, and see her big red eye staring back at you as she crawls across the ceiling, before landing in front of you and letting out a monstrous roar. A promising introduction to the giant armoured spider, but sadly she's all flash and no substance. Shooting at her with your trusty slingshot while she's crawling on the ceiling will cause her to fall and leave her open to your attacks. Rinse and repeat this technique a few times and you will have beaten the first boss in the game without much fuss. Number 7. Man on Fire – Metal Gear Solid 5 Hideo Kojima's iconic Metal Gear series helped breathe new life into the stealth game genre, while also giving gamers some of the coolest and most confusing storylines in all of gaming. The bosses of the Metal Gear series are some of the most memorable of all time. There was Psycho Mantis, who could read your memory card for other games you'd been playing, Grey Fox was a sword-wielding cyborg who could turn invisible, there was even Fat Man, who was just a fat man on rollerblades who loved drinking wine through a straw and had a fondness for grenades. Sadly though, not all Metal Gear Solid 5's bosses lived up to their predecessors, and this was especially the case with the Man on Fire. When this previous Metal Gear boss, Colonel Volgin, returns as a man permanently on fire and chases you throughout the opening stages of the game, you get the sense that this will take a massive effort to put this guy down. Unfortunately, the eventual boss battle is just you dodging his attacks as you lead him near some conveniently placed water tanks for you to shoot at, putting out his flames for good. Number 6. Tower of Sauron – Middle-earth Shadow of Mordor 
Video games based off of well-established films or books were once met with trepidation by gamers expecting heartless cash grabs with boring and repetitive gameplay that was not faithful to the original source material. Thankfully, in recent years, this has been improved thanks to games like Shadow of Mordor. A major factor in this game's success was, of course, the story, as Talion and Sarah Brimbor seek to get revenge on Sauron and his servants, the Black Captains. One of these captains was the Tower of Sauron. Partly responsible for the death of Talion's family, the Tower of Sauron looks like the most grotesque of the captains, with four swords impaled in his back, armour fused to his skin and a metal muzzle attached to his face. Unfortunately, when you get to fight the Tower of Sauron, he creates multiple illusions of himself throughout his fortress that you must stealth kill before a timer runs out. You then confront him for the final time in his throne room where you defeat him for a good old button mashing cutscene. Despite the Tower of Sauron looking the part, he was nothing more than another lacklustre boss in a great game. Number 5. Osman Sadler Resident Evil 4 In the sixth major instalment of the Resident Evil series, gamers once again take control of Leon S. Kennedy, now a US government special agent who is sent on a mission to rescue the president's daughter, Ashley Graham, who has been kidnapped by a mysterious cult. As he makes his way through a nameless Spanish village, Kennedy discovers that the locals have been infected by a mind-controlling parasite known as Las Plagas. He also meets Osman Sadler, the leader of the Los Illuminados cult, who wants to infect Ashley with the parasite so she can, in turn, infect the president. The game does a great job in setting Sadler up as the final boss of the game as he talks down to you, messes with your attempts to save Ashley, and sends numerous henchmen after you. When you finally do fight Sadler, he transforms into this hideous spider-like creature. Sadly, the battle does not stand out in any major way. Shooting Sadler in his weak points while dodging his attacks is surprisingly easy, and creates a rather sour end to an otherwise phenomenal game. Number 4. The Great Serpent – Sekiro Shadows Die Twice Sekiro is another brutally challenging action-adventure game from developers From Software. Sekiro differs slightly from other From Software games as it allows players to use stealth to sneak up on unsuspecting foes in order to perform fatal but glorious death blows. This particularly comes in handy when you stumble upon the many different mini-bosses scattered throughout the game. These bosses will not be as difficult to beat as a main boss like Lady Butterfly or the Divine Dragon, but they will prove themselves to be worthy adversaries in this Dark Souls-like game. But if there is one of these mini-bosses that does not quite live up to the expectations, it's the Great Serpent. He's more akin to an in-game event or a massive puzzle than a mini-boss fight. When you encounter the Great Serpent in the Ashina Castle outskirts, you are left stunned and petrified as he towers over you. Fortunately, you don't actually have to fight the Great Serpent. All you have to do to beat him is hold your nerve as you sneak around him and find the perfect opportunity to launch a death blow attack. Number 3. Vas Montenegro – Far Cry 3 Despite Vas Montenegro only appearing for the first half of the game's storyline, he is widely revered as one of the most unsettling antagonists in all of gaming. Vas was messing with our heads before the game even came out, as he proved how psychotic he was in the Far Cry experience where he tortured Christopher Mintz Plass. So when Jason and his friends skydive over the Rook Islands and are captured by Vas and his pirates, things go south fast. He kills your brother, tortures your girlfriend, and will constantly mess with you throughout the game. On two occasions, he captures you, scares the life out of you with his haunting monologues, and then leaves you for dead. But if you were expecting a showdown against such an unhinged individual to be the highlight of the game, you were sadly let down. After tracking Vas down to his hideout, you enter a hallucination where you shoot Vas in the head, then fight multiple versions of him before stabbing him multiple times. Not only was our final tango with Vas surprisingly easy, but the rest of the game feels a little deflated after the death of such a memorable villain. Number 2. Killer Croc Batman Arkham Asylum while Batman is escorting the Joker through Arkham Asylum, Killer Croc is also being escorted back to his lair in the sewer system. Their paths cross and Croc claims that he has Batman's scent and he'll hunt him down and kill him. When Joker takes over the asylum, you wonder if Croc will have the chance at revenge. Eventually, you must enter his lair in order to retrieve an item needed to save the lives of patients the Joker has been experimenting on, and of course, Croc is there waiting for you. But Croc's attempts to catch you are laughable at best. As you carefully navigate your way over wooden pallets, Croc will occasionally leap out and attack you, but a single batarang to his shock collar sends him into a spasm and back into the water. When you have what you need, he begins chasing you out of his lair. When you get back to the entrance, you can activate a trap Batman set up earlier that sends Croc falling into a chasm below. We get that Brain beats Brawn, but in this case, we would have preferred if Brawn was able to pose at least a bit of a threat. 
Number 1. Lambent Brumac, Gears of War 2 When you get to the final boss of any game, you expect it to be the biggest challenge possible, like an enemy that forces you to burn through all your ammo while testing all of your wit and skills. What you don't expect is an enemy that cannot move and goes down in just a few hits. Sadly, that's what you get with Lambent Brumac. After Marcus and Dom use a hijacked Brumac to help their helicopters to deliver a bomb, the Brumac begins to mutate due to all the emulsion. The Lambent Brumac grows in size, develops a second head that bursts out of its original one, sprouts large tentacles, and develops roots that dig into the ground. It also destroys the bomb, forcing Marcus to improvise and use the Hammer of Dawn to cause the Lambent Brumac to explode. As horrific and intimidating as the Lambent Brumac may be, it just sits there and does very little to stop you as you just aim and shoot it a few times before it begins to violently detonate. Considering the exhilarating boss fights against the Leviathan and Scourge earlier, this was an anticlimactic way to end the game. And that's our list! What was a boss fight that you found to be unimpressive? Leave us a comment below and let us know. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button down below. But for now, I've been Kirsten from What Culture, and I'll see you in the next one.